Welcome back to Chalk Talk. I'm Lane Hurt along with head soccer coach Mark Rikorian. Coach, we've got a bunch of different formations back here on the board. I imagine you're going to give us a, a little idea of all the different formations that, that soccer teams can play. Well, I'll give you a little bit uh, of an idea about some of the different formations. There's an awful lot of different ways to play, but uh, I've drawn out, uh, drawn out four different ones and uh, I can uh, briefly take you through what uh, the advantages and disadvantages are. All right, let's get to the board. Okay, so the shape that I've just drawn is a 4-3-3, and a lot of people think it's more of an attacking shape because there are three forwards uh, closer to the opponent's goals. The advantage of this is when you get the ball forward, you have more people that are closer to create goal-scoring chances. The disadvantage is that when you're defending, there's huge pockets of space for the opponents to attack. So this is a shape that is quite popular, especially in college soccer, and uh, it's very effective. Okay, here we have a 4-4-2 with a diamond in the middle of the midfield. Uh, again, this is widely used throughout the college game. Uh, they put the extra number in the midfield to kind of block up the opponent being able to attack in this area here while still having two forwards. Again, the advantage to this is you do have a lot of numbers forward. It gives you a chance to get, uh, get forward, uh, but you have a bigger block here in the midfield to defend. So here you have a 5-4-1, and this is oftentimes used by a team that feels as though maybe the opponent's a little bit better than them. So they get a lot of numbers behind the ball, they have a big block of players in this area here, and they're looking to counterattack through one player. So sometimes when you're overmatched, you look at playing a defensive uh, shape and a defensive formation, and this is an example of one. You can see it's, there's a lot of people in a small amount of space. The problem, of course, with this is it's really hard to attack out of it because there's a lot of, a lot of space to go. Okay, so here you have the 4-2-3-1. You can see four players along the back line, uh, two defensive midfield players, uh, three midfielders across here, and a striker up top. This is a really flexible and versatile system. Sometimes you can invert one of the defending midfield players and in essence create a 4-1-4-1. Uh, here at Florida State we've played uh, some 4-2-3-1, uh, some 4-1-4-1. Uh, we think that it gives us a, a lot of uh, versatility in, uh, in our attack and um, geometry is important in soccer and it gives an awful lot of different angles and triangles. So uh, this is also a very popular shape throughout the college game. There you have it folks. A lot to take in. There's so much that you can do schematically with soccer, but hopefully this will give you a better idea of what you're seeing when you watch a Seminole soccer game or just a soccer game in general. For Coach Corian, I'm Lane Hurt. Go Noles.